like who told you you could do it like this? Who told you you could do it like who told you you could do it like this? Who told you you could do it like who told you you could do it? Set, stop, place hard with the Chris one race over two race. He's the champion race. Come me down, break your fall straight to the floor. Make you buy more onto the war bus. It free fall, free fall. But there's no so time quick. I need my grip. It won't slip tight. Saturday night. On about Dan going off to Thailand without me, I'm actually really missing him. So I've decided I'm going to give him a surprise call. Now stay with me, it's going to be really exciting. Aloha. Dan, Dan at the Amber and Studio D, how are you? Amber, good, good, how are you? Great, now how's Thailand? We really miss you. Oh, uh, I tell you what, I'm missing you guys as well, but I've got to say, Thailand is wicked. I'm in Phuket at the moment. Sunny, all the athletes are getting ready, checking out their courses and stuff, and I'm loving every single minute of it. Now, have you seen like any exciting action on the on the courses yet? Well, basically, they've just been warming up, they've checked out the courses, seeing what they're like, and the climbers really happy with the climbing walls. The boat ramp is a lot better than last year's, and uh, and uh, the street course is looking pretty smart as well, and uh, they're all getting amped. All of the athletes are getting amped. Great. And how's a new presenter? How's the presenter, Jen? Jen is going awesome. It's good to catch up with him again. We'd like to catch up with Jen, and uh, we're going to both attack it because we think two heads are better. Than one in this kind of situation, and uh, two heads are lots of fun in the sun. Now, do you gonna... miss do you miss being my partner on Studio D? Oh, of course I do, of course I do. But I've got to say, JX2 is a very important thing. We're going to get it done. It's only going to take a week. Then I'm going to be back in the studio to kick on with Studio D and yourself. Good, good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm missing you a little bit. It's a bit lonely here. I know it gets a bit like that. I'm like that at the moment too. I'm sort of sitting there in my hotel room at night, foreign place. But I've got to say, it's all good to go out, have a nice big old dinner, and then catch up with Jen in the morning and hit JX2. Well, I'm going to see you a little bit later on the show with JX2, so I won't be all that lonely today. Good work, good work. Well, make sure you enjoy it. Get yourselves ready. I will, I will, Dan. There's a bit of a delay, but I'll, I'll talk to you maybe later on in the week. All right, cool. I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye, Dan. Buy me something pretty. Bye, bye. Oh, okay. I feel better now. So we're going to go back to Buzz, and, and, I'll, and I'm going to watch Buzz because I want to find out what happens to the big head. <laughs> Cup. Hi, I'm Dan from Australia. I am Jen from Asia. Now we are here because it is the second time the Disney Channel has gathered all of the oh. best junior extreme athletes from around the Asia Pacific. So the long wait is finally over. Let's kick off JX2. Now Jen, we were both here last time, mate. Now what are you looking forward to about it this time? Tough competition, big airs, and the friendships they're going to make. Yes, I think so. But you know what I'm looking forward to? Checking out this site. Look at it, would you? It is that much better, it is that much better, and it is that much more extreme. 200% more extreme. So let's get the day started, let the games begin. Right here on JX2. On day one, we head down to the park course with the inline skaters. We'll go pro class with skateboard pro Sasha Steinhorst. Plus, skateboarding's best tricks. All on Disney's Junior X Games 2, presented by Toyota. 
Welcome to Phuket, the island of unreal beaches, fun and friendly people. This place is just absolute paradise. And once again, host for Disney's Junior X Games presented by Toyota. Promising to be a much bigger and better event this year. We've got more athletes, more events, and look at this unbelievable venue. All right, before the fun begins, let's see how it's all gonna flow. We've got four sport categories, aggressive inline, skateboarding, bicycle stunt, and sport climbing. Competitors are gonna take part in four events. In sport climbing, there's two. And once all the events have been completed, scores are gonna be totaled and the top five will advance to the championship finals, which will determine the five overall champions who will each win an all expenses paid family trip to Disneyland. Aggressive inline. All right, brother Bruce Robson, aggressive inline coming up. Why don't you explain how it's going to flow? All right, we've got our top 10 semi finalists through to the final. There'll be two runs each, 50 seconds per run, and the judges will be awarding a 100 point scale. All right, if you look at the heat here, we've got a good representation from Thailand, and boy, the Japanese skaters have really been dominating the inline world for the past couple of years. I like the street course a lot better. It's a new course, it's all better. I hope I can do well, but I'm not sure. At least in the top 10. So let's not waste any time. The athletes are warming up and getting prepared themselves for the challenge ahead. And as you can see, uh, some last minute preparations. Everybody talking about their runs and getting suited up and ready to flow. The crowd on hand and ready to see some of the action on the park course. All right, and the Japanese contingency on hand to root on one of their own. Kazuki Amai, our first skater, 14 years old out of Osaka, Japan. This kid has tons of technical skill. Check him out. Into the course. A oh, huge 540 to start off that run, climbing up on top of the soapbox there. Yeah, throws that Liu Kang variation into it to score some extra points with the judges. You gotta like that. Yeah, and Kazuki coming across using the planter box, going all across every part of this course. And judges looking to see these skaters use as much of the course as possible. Use it all up. They want to see you do a variety of tricks. They want to see spins. They want to see grinds. They want to see a full pull like that yeah. right down the rail. Sensational start. Starting switch stance, going in backwards and doing the full 180 onto that grind. Kazuki really tearing it up at the moment, using those grind rails nicely, dropping back in across the spine. Big 360, looking very comfortable out there at the moment. All right, Kazuki running short on time right now. Going to want to score some points with the judges. Locks on another grind. And at the buzzer, over the double bar, pretty strong opening run for Kazuki Amai. Yeah, look at this as he comes into this quarter pipe off the top, gets both boots down nice and tight, holds that grind, drops back in. That's going to be a good, impressive run for Kazuki. 77 points rewarded from the judges. Strong opener from Kazuki Amai. Takeshi Yasutoko, 14, also out of Osaka. This kid, without a doubt, one of the best inliners in the world. Oh, these guys just know how to tear it up. He and his brother Ito. Look at that, another big 540. This time just popping up, back stance onto that sub box. Well, Takeshi, last year's defending champion. And, of course, knows how to mix it up with the big boys as well. We've seen him at the Summer X Games go out and tear up that ramp. Well, Takeshi known for his vert skating prowess and has recently just taken it to the street. And I'm telling you, within the next couple of years, this guy's going to be one of the most dominant street skaters as well as he's really ripping up this park course. Oh, that's a big drop in there as he comes back across to this side of the park course. Well, he loves the vert side. Check it out. Flat spin, 540. Takeshi just absolutely ripping it up out there. Back on up to the sub. A little bit of time left. Let's see what he's got mixed up there to finish it off. Just a grab over the launch to cap it off for Takeshi Yasutoko out of Osaka, Japan. Look at the height he gets on this. The flat spin. He's almost upside down as he goes for that 540. A little sketchy on the landing, but not a bad run at all for Takeshi. All right, next skater representing Thailand. Last year's silver medalist, Surawat Boomroom Keech out of Bangkok. This kid definitely, definitely going to be a threat. Starting from the other side of the course there. Of course, these guys can start from wherever they want using both those planter boxes to get himself underway. A little 360 to get himself up on top. And he's going to get himself set for the big drop in. Coming in off the launch. Off the launch. Coming into the launch. Spinning 360, grabbing it for a little extra style. Scoring it with the judges. All the way up to the sub box and locking on. Oh, there's his favorite trick, the 540 as he comes across the middle of the park. And Surawat, a good start on this run. All right, short on time and a little double variation on his grind on the rail. Another jib at the planter box and a little bit of time left on the clock. Surawat going to want to try and score at least one more trick with the judges over the spine. 
Flat spin 360, gets his grab to it, and not a bad run for Sir Wad Boom Room Key. You can see this going nice and early on that 540. Probably got a little bit more height if he took off right from the top, but that'll score him a 73 on that second run. Not a bad score at all. Oh, man. Soishiro Kanishima from Japan, 14 years old out of Hiroshima, and this kid lighting up the course all week long. Oh, starts with a huge 900. What a great way to start a run. Well, you open up with a 900, you're pretty much just pretty much saying to the judges and the rest of the heat that this is what I'm... Th uh, I can start huge. Where do you think I'm going from here? Look at this. Gets himself up to the top. Gets nice and set. Adjusts the shorts. He's going to come in and hit this slide rail. Aliou oh, fish brain nice. all the way down the rail. Oh, sketch is out there, but that doesn't really take him out of his rhythm too much. Still got that smile on his face. I think that's from the 900. I don't think he's going to worry too much about that little fall. Well, you know, when you open up with a trick like that, you really give yourself a little bit of breathing room so you can uh, kind of catch your breath and set yourself for the rest of your run. So Ishiro locking on. Technical part of the run, getting the grinds in. The judges want to see it all. They want to see him spin. They want to see him grind. And so 74 and a half points for Soishiro Kanishima. Yeah, yeah. How happy is that kid? He's been smiling all week long. Some unreal talent here in Thailand. Let's take a look at some of the other skaters in the heat and see how they scored. So after the aggressive inline finals, you can see Kazuki Amai takes the gold and earns 10 points towards the overall championship and that trip to Disneyland. Soishiro Kanishima in second place earns seven points. Before we get into our next event, got a very special someone we want you to meet, Sasha Steinhorst, pro skateboarder. Hi, this is Sasha Steinhorst. We're in Phuket, Thailand at the Junior X Games 2. This is the uh, park course that they've provided for us, and uh, they've got a lot of different types of obstacles here. We've got a smaller technical section, which uh, skateboarders are probably really going to like. We've got larger quarter pipes and spines for all the bikers and rollerbladers. We're going to walk you through some of these obstacles right now. Here we are at one of the more street-oriented obstacles. This is the uh, double round rail. It's pretty cool for the kids to learn like 50-50s and board slides down, no slides. It's a fun little obstacle. A lot of kids are going to be having a good time on this. Okay, now we've moved on to one of the larger obstacles on the course. This is the big giant flat bank. Most of the kids are going to be starting their run from here. This is a good spot for them to gain momentum to hit the rest of the course, all the other obstacles. A few of the kids will be using this uh, to do kick flips, 50-50s and board slide down it. All right, we're over at the snowboard jump section. We've got two different size hitters here. Skateboarders will be doing just like, you know, kind of air grabs, front side, back side grabs. The BMXers will start doing, you know, back flips and 360s, Superman seat grabs. And this is a pretty fun course. It's a little bit more high speed than over there. Usually this section is kind of one of the crowd pleasers because the guys go big and, and that's kind of what the crowd likes. So definitely when you're uh, checking it out, this is one of the spots where the guys will go off. So keep your eyes peeled. All right, Keith, some great advice there from Sasha. We are into the skateboard best trick final. This is what we call the jam session. Ten minutes, everyone out there at once. Put your hand up when you're ready to be judged, and the judges will be scoring out of 100. Yeah, this is unreal, too. we got a nine-year-old Korean girl in the mix. She's ripping it up as well. The crowd on hand ready to see just how well these kids have excelled in the past year. These kids are pulling off tricks that some of the professionals aren't even pulling off. You know, it's awesome, man. The, I mean, these kids, the, there's some ten-year-olds out there that are just doing the best tricks. Man, I think the theme here is the smaller the kid, the bigger the trick. These kids just absolutely going off skateboard style. Let's check out some highlights from the best trick contest here at the Junior X.
Bruce. I'm absolutely loving this jam session format. Everybody out there on the course at once, that's what skating's all about. So here you go. Chai Seed Wangzamart, the tie, takes the gold medal and 10 points towards the overall championship. The Aussie, Blake Ellis, earns the silver and seven points towards that trip to Disneyland. Hi, I'm Dan here in Phuket, Thailand. I've taken some time out to get, a, get to know a little bit about Ben from Australia. Ben, how are you, mate? Good, it's very hot out here. Mate, how hot is it? Check it out. Look at that, it is very sweaty. I'm feeling the heat as well. Mate, what do you think of the course? It's very good, it's better than last year. They've got smaller amps, so it's a little better for all the other kids out here. Have you got to meet many of the other skaters from the other countries, made any new friends yet? Yeah, I've made some from Singapore, I've met some from Korea and China. Good to hear, good to hear, mate. Now, uh, what do your parents think of Thailand? It's very hot. Very hot. Now, uh, we've got some stiff competition coming up. Now, have you got anything special that you're going to be doing out there? Yeah, I want to ollie off some of the big quarters and do kickflip indie. Good stuff. Now, you're having a good time above all? Yep. What's the best thing about it here for you? Um, big street course. Big street course. All right, well, this is Ben, I'm Dan, and there's plenty more action coming up right here on JX2. After the break, we get a grip on boys bouldering. Hello. Head behind the scenes. We're going to the skate park. And the bikers go wild on the vert ramp. Any lucky charms? Yes. I don't have it on. Yeah, I have this little toy, Garfield, and he has an X on him. My pink bracelet, it's like sequins, it's mad. Will always have my chalk bag. Lucky Charm, uh, my coach. <laughs> the cheer. I just need one person to cheer for me and that's it. Join us on the very first day of competition here at JX2, right in Patong Beach, Phuket, Thailand. Dan, 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 that's CJ Wellsmore, the wonder from down under. Look at him, no he's way. thinking about his future. I wonder what he's pondering, what's he thinking about? I know, the Hey CJ, what were you thinking about and what are your thoughts about JX2? Oh, uh, well I was thinking about the course and how different it is now, because mm. last year there wasn't as much stuff to do. Right. And this year and the vert ramp, it's all changed and I really like it. That's cool, so you ready for it? So what tricks can we see this year? Uh, maybe a flat spin 540 over the fun box and some technical grinds and spins. Excellent. Now, talking about uh, tricks, mate, it's the first day of competi competition. What's happened to your hand? Oh, well, I fell over on the vert ramp and I got the, some burns on my hand and stuff. Yeah. Oh, no right. good. That's, that reminds me of a photo I saw at your place. You <laughs> did that back home as well, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, uh, no good. Is that going to stop you from competing? Oh, I don't know, hopefully not, but we'll just have to see. Oh, see, so right. this is just a part of aggressive inline, but everybody's a winner here. You're still here and you're getting behind all the other athletes, which is a good thing, mate. Well, best of luck for your second bid at inline champion. Best of luck, CJ. All is a champion. Yep. Now it's time to get back to the action right here on JX2. All right, still with Disney's Junior X Games 2, presented by Toyota, happening on the beautiful island of Phuket, Thailand. It's a hot day, the crowd is on hand, ready to see some of the action. Let's take a look back now at some of the highlights of the semifinals, let you know how we got to this point here at the JX2. Highlights from the semifinals as the competition continues to grow, so does the talent as we move on to the boys' bouldering event. Keith, we've got 14 competitors, two walls, 
three minutes each, and we'll take the average of the two best runs. All right, and there's a look at the lineup. There's a lot of kids, and it builds me more confidence. Bigger, funner, more exciting. Exciting, very fun. All right, and you look, some of our climbers uh, getting ready, hanging out in isolation, and some getting some practice on on the practice wall, while others trying to visualize the routes to solve these problems. If you take a look, the wall on the left, Muay Thai, the wall on the right, we call Tsunami. And here, Thomas Farrell, our first climber from Australia, his first attempt up Muay Thai wall. So Keith, three minutes per wall, what if one of these guys falls off? Well, you can utilize the entire three minutes, but what you're gonna find is uh, climbers wanna save a little energy to solve the next problem. They get a three minute rest in between before they have to rotate to Tsunami. And here we see Karul Abu Hassan, his first attempt climbing up Tsunami through the inverted section right there. There's some amazing strength in those fingertips. What is it, Keith? Is it strength? Is it attitude? Is it technique? How about D all the above? And here we see the young Aussie working up the Muay Thai wall. The blue holds mark the boys' routes. The red holds mark the girls' routes. And if you touch the red route, you're going to be DQ'd. You're not going to get scored for that. And look at this. To the mantle and topping out on Tsunami, the Malaysian. 14 years old, flashing the route on his first attempt. And when I say flash the route, I do mean made it up there on the first go at it. And here we see Karul Abu Hassan working on Muay Thai wall. One of the major differences in these walls, Keith, is it uh, one a lot harder than the other? Well, you've got two completely different routes, and the overhanging sections start a little bit differently. As you see Thomas Farrell working on the overhang of Tsunami, that overhang comes up awfully early in the route. Look at that, completely inverted right there, working through the overhang and trying to stick it, greasing that hold a little bit. And now we look back to Muay Thai wall. And the Malaysian topping out on that wall as well. Wowie, flashing both routes, and uh, that definitely, definitely bodes well in the hunt for an overall championship. And Thomas Farrell running out of time right there. All right, Andrew Robles, the Filipino, 14 years old, his first attempt up Muay Thai wall. Looks like he's taking plenty of time on this wall. He's not going to go out there and burn up too much energy at once. He's going to be very calculated and just pick that route. Well, but one of the good strategies is to continue moving. And James Casse, the Australian, 15 years old, his first attempt up Tsunami. And watch how fluidly he works through this overhanging section right here. And part of the name of the game is to continue to move because when you're hanging there, just like that, the arms and fingers are starting to burn. One hold to go. You can't grease that one. And the Filipino, Andrew Robles, topping out on Muay Thai wall. All right, James Casse, the Aussie. And you hear the contingency rooting him on to get him up there. He's made it through the toughest section of the wall over the overhang. And now a couple of holds to go to top out. And there you go. Grabbing on, hands firmly in the box. All he needs to do is get two hands in that box and he scores. Big difference in size with these guys, Keith. Andrew seems to be uh, a lot smaller than James. Now, the extra reach or the smaller size, what's going to make the big difference? Well, reach is obviously going to help you out if you're going for some of the longer holds. And the route sitter tries to kind of average that out so the holds aren't too far for the shorter climbers but aren't too easy for the taller climbers. And James Casse now working up Muay Thai wall. And the overhang here towards the top of the wall. So once you burn the energy to get up there, you got to get over that ledge. And no worries for James right there. How stoked is he? Flashing both routes. And Andrew Robles, the Filipino, now reaching into the chalk to see if he can get his way up Tsunami. And that chalk gives him a little extra traction. You know, in the heat and the humidity, your hands start to sweat, your fingers start to sweat. And that chalk in that bag really helps him get a little extra traction. Oh yeah, two hands on the hold. He scores it, that's all he needs, and he'll just go for the elevator drop down. Boy, Bruce, we saw such a huge number of entries for sports climbing this year. Let's take a look at uh, some of the other finalists in the heat here.
So, Bruce, check it out. A three-way tie for first place. That means we had two, three guys top out on both walls, which is pretty much unheard of. And, you know, the Asians have dominated the sport for years and years and years around the world. And nice to see some Australians showing up there as well. I know that makes you proud. Oh, I'm a very proud man. So there's a look at some of the lighter moments around JX2, but let's move on with the action in the Bike Stunt Vert Finals. Once again, Keith, two runs each, 45 seconds per run. The judge is going to be awarding out of 100. That's right, we average those scores because we like them all here at the JX2. The crowd on hand inside the Vert Stadium, ready to check out the action under the lights. Steve just checking back on the video some of his uh, past runs. And some of our pros on site comparing tans and checking out the action. All right, so here we go. Stephen Cadona, 13 years old out of Australia. This kid medaled last year, but I'll tell you what. He did so with really just maybe a couple of bar spins and a one-footer. This year, he's really, really, really spent a lot of time working on his tricks and working on his bike riding. You see him on the vert right now, locking onto the coping, working the technical side of it first. Yeah, starting off with a bunch of good grinds there, making sure he uses that ramp. A big X up for Stephen there. Looks like he's really uh, picked up from last year, Keith. Yes, we will definitely see more in store from Stephen Cadona. Check him out right now, riding out Fakie. Very, very difficult to do. Oh, and a bar spin there on the flatland as well. Right there in the transition. Also super difficult to do because you don't have a much, much room to clear that bar spin. Now, Keith, there's two ramps here. We've got the Junior X ramp and we've got the bigger ramp there for the Asian X Games qualifier. Can these guys use both those ramps? Riders can use as much of the ramps as they want, but judges really are only expecting these guys to use the smaller ramp, mostly because of their size. It really takes a great deal of energy to pump up those ramps for 45 seconds. All right, and our next rider representing Indonesia, Chandra Punamawan. This kid just loves flying high in the air. He started riding at about age 12, trains every day. And you got to realize these kids really don't, most of them don't really have that, that many opportunities to ride vert ramps. They're just, you know, vert ramps are not readily available all over Asia, if you know what I'm talking about. And I think you do. I think I do. Says his hero is Ryan Nyquist, of course, uh, one of the great vert riders from the U.S. And Ryan really started out as a dirt jumper that took it to the vert and now just dominating every time he takes to the course, man. He's a solid vert rider. He's a solid park rider. He's a solid dirt rider and really one of the great all-around riders in the sport. Now, once again, you can see there Chandra just taking a little bit of a breather on the top. He's got 45 seconds. He can stop. He can keep moving. He can do whatever he wants out there. Well, it takes a lot of energy to pump that bike up that ramp for 45 seconds and looking like a first run score of 87 and a second run score of 89 points for the Indonesian. All right, from Australia, David Reed, 15 years old. Now, you were talking about uh, ramps available and Australia, of course, especially down in Canberra where David is from. Lots of free ramps. And check it out, holding the manual all the way across the deck and dropping it back in Dennis McCoy style. Going for the feeble grind on the opposite side of the deck. Another manual holding it. Oh, a little bit of a hop and a touch. And of course, the judges are going to be hoping that he holds that without putting the foot down. But well, uh, he's going to keep trying until he gets that one right. He did it the first time. He's trying to repeat it. There you go. There's the manual. Holds it. Brings the bike back in. The crowd loves it. And the judges are going to like it too. There's the feeble grind. Nice and clean. Yeah, getting very technical. Holding all those grinds. The Australians really dominating out there. Good run indeed for David Reed. All right, take a look at this right now. Taking the manual up to the deck. Holding it. Holding it. And drop. Right back into the vert. Nice and smooth. Judges loving that. And David rewarded 92 points in the second run. And a look at some lists here in the final. 